Welcome back everyone. I'm Jason and you're watching Jason Jensen Trains. Today we're going to build another very tall structure, another plastic kit from Walther's. Uh, I enjoyed building the last one so much uh, that I thought I would just jump right in and do another one. But before we get started, please take a moment and subscribe to the channel. And please, Help me to grow this channel by sharing it on Facebook, Instagram. Um, share it with friends or hobby shops or um, clubs that maybe you belong to. Um, let them know about my channel so that I can keep producing more videos for you. All right, well, this is a very large kit today, so let's get to it. Okay, in today's video, we are building another plastic kit from Walther's, and it's called Ashmore Hotel. Now, this is even larger than the kit I built from Walther's in my last video. We're going to start by painting the walls with a gray primer, and then all of the windows and the lower portion, we're going to use a dark green uh, spray paint. So I'm going to go ahead and spray paint the walls the gray color and all of the windows and the lower portion um, the dark green. Next we're going to start to paint the walls and we're using Parisian Gray. I don't know if there's too much of a glare, but it's Parisian Gray and it, it's a chalk paint. And we're going to use a sponge to apply it. Let's see. Now we're going to have to take a brush to get in all the fine detail. So after I was done sponging the walls, I did some dry brushing with light gray. And I went from the top down to about, about here. So I went heavier at the top and then sort of faded it down. And then we'll darken the bottom here a little bit with some pigments, sort of dirty it up. This will help give the illusion that it's actually taller than what it is by having it lighter or brighter at the top and having it fade down to a darker gray. Okay, for the bottom portion, we're going to be using thicket and then I'll be dry brushing some of this thicket over the green doors and windows. Now a really great feature about this kit is that they give you three options. You have the 1900s era, you have the 1950s era, and you have a modern era. Uh, the map modern era is really neat because it has this full uh, canopy that goes, uh, canopy overhang that goes around the, the front. I'm going to build mine using the 1900s era. So it tells you what parts you need for the lower level. Um. After we get those all laid out, again, I'll do some dry brushing of the thicket over those parts. But then it's gluing in all of the windows. So I've been doing some dry brushing on the uh, panels here. And there's little um, 
pegs and the little holes in the panels. Here is a dry brush paint that's a light blue. And maybe after I get these glued in there, I could dry brush the whole thing with a light blue. Okay, so I just did some dry brushing with the uh, light blue. Now we'll add some dirt and grime to it, uh, but this is a good base. So what I have to do is first take the thicket and dry brush all the panels and windows with that. Then do some very light dry brushing with the light blue just for some highlights. So I've decided to complete one wall even with pigments and weathering uh, to see if I like the direction <laughs> that I'm going in. I know it sounds kind of weird but um, I'm just going to complete one wall. On these windows, you have to make sure that there's no plastic sticking up. It has to be perfectly flat because a piece of um, clear plastic gets put on top of it. So it has to sit flush on there. So if there's any little raised plastic, you just got to cut that or sand it. So what I do is I put them all in place. And then just put a little bit of glue right in the corner. I will let that sit and dry for a little bit. And then I'm going to um, do some weathering before I put the clear plastic on it. Now I'm going to start to add some pigments. And I'm using winter soil. Now we'll go to Farm Dark Earth. This one's darker than the uh, winter soil. So we're not going to want to use as much of it. Okay, well I'm feeling better about this now. So now I can move on to putting the panels in the bottom part and putting the windows in and then weathering all of these. So I've uh, taken a little bit of this rust color and gone back into this wall a little bit. You just have to keep working at it until you're, you're happy with it. Or sometimes just completely walk away from it and come back later uh, with fresh eyes. I'm really liking this rust though. Okay, now I will move on and start to work on all of these. Okay, so I've got the, the bottom portion done while the panel's glued in. And so again, on the panels, I first dry brushed it with Thicket. Then dry brushed it with Light Blue. And now we'll take the pigments and weather it so that it looks like this. So there's sort of a before and after. And I have to paint the doors silver. All right, this is a, again, this is an easy kit, but a lot, a lot of painting. And we still have to get all of our windows put in like we did on this one a lot of work okay all of the windows are glued in everything is completely dry next we're going to use our pigments next we have to glue in all the individual windows <laughs> this this will take a while. Uh, 
I wanted to point out that if you are going to use the window shades that they provide you, you have to cut off all these little nubs that are on there. I'll show you up close. Hopefully you can see those little pieces sticking up. They break off just with your finger. Like you don't have to use a knife, you just break it off. But you want that flat so that when you cut these out, they lay flat on there. So keep that in mind if you're building this at home. And like I said, they're really easy. Like even now that these are all glued in place, all you have to do is go through and break all those off and they snap off and it's flush so it's not a problem okay this wall is done and yes it took a little while i'll go on and finish up the rest of the walls all right the windows are all done now let's glue the walls together onto the base now i want to point out that there is a front and a back to the base. You'll notice there's little tabs that stick up. Okay, so the front one, there's a tab on this end and this end. So if you put a ruler or a straight piece of paper, you'll notice that the tabs in the middle are set back. Where the back side, all those tabs that stick up are pretty much flush. They're all straight. So the front, they're recessed in. And they're recessed in to allow for the thickness of all your, um, I don't know, your, your plates and windows. The thickness of that plastic. So hopefully that makes sense. If you're building this at home, hopefully that helps you. As you can see, the the window here sits back further than the corner. And those tabs allow for that. Now this is the front. And you'll see there's there's these little tabs and you'll see there's a double which means a single fits in the center of that then a single then a double so this one pretty much has the opposites so those fit together and I'm still I'm almost done using my glue and then I'll switch to using this cement but for now i just want to use up um this tube so i'm not wasting it now we need to get the roof glued on and then the little structure that goes on the top and then the kit comes with a lot of details for the rooftop so we'll get started on that next I wanted to quick show you the instructions for the rooftop so we have another structure that goes on there and then all the details So I've still got a little bit of weathering to do up on the rooftop and I want to add uh, probably two billboards, maybe other little details, but uh, I'm excited to get this over to the layout and see what it looks like. So let's take it over there. 
Well, there it is. <laughs> this is so exciting. Uh, it's really starting to look like a city. Uh, we have another large building that we're going to build that sits right here. And it's a four-story apartment building from Foss Scale Models called Watcher Apartments. Um, we'll have a street level that's up here and then tall buildings all along the wall. And some of those will even be N-scale structures. And then we have lots of roads. Lots of roads that go in between these. Uh, we have a road that goes uphill that gets us up to this level here. Um, <laughs> this is just so exciting. Well, the last three videos, I have built these three large, very large kits. Uh, and it's so great to see the dramatic change that it's made on the layout. It's so exciting. But I am getting a little tired of <laughs> the hours that it takes to build something that size. So probably in the next one or two videos, I'm going to switch to some really small structures that go in specific areas on the layout. And I'll probably be using kits from Foss Scale Models from their Kit of the Month Club. And I'll be changing them, like I said, to fit very specific areas on the layout. All right, well, thank you all so much for watching. I truly appreciate it. And a huge thank you to all of my Patreons. You guys are the best. Uh, this is not possible without you guys. Um, if you want to become a Patreon, please visit patreon.com forward slash Jason Jensen Trains. All right. Well, until next time, stay motivated and happy modeling, everyone.